a Sunday morning. Isn't it wonderful that in a season where we get so busy and it's so chaotic, it's a lot of fun, there's a lot of demands on your time, it is such a beautiful moment to take time out of your week and gather together with the family of God in this place and just prioritize lifting up the name of our great God as the source of our joy the one we're singing about this morning. Listen, if you're in this room and you have a need in your life, whatever that looks like, in your family, in your finances, in your future, whatever it looks like right now, we're going to pray together. And we're going to believe as we continue in worship, as you spend some time in prayer, that God is about to begin moving in your life and in your situation right now. And it's going to continue throughout the remainder of this service and into next week, and into the next week, and into the next week, because that's just the goodness of the God that we serve. If you have a need in this room right now, would you just, would you just let me know by slipping up a hand? Yeah, that's about what I figure. There's a lot of people around the room that have a need in their life. Would you just, right now with faith in your heart, would you bow your head and close your eyes? And as I begin to pray, would you lift up your voice and pray with me and just help me believe that God is going to do great things in the remainder of this service. Lord Jesus, we thank you. God, we thank you for your presence that we already feel in this place. God, we thank you that we know that you are with us and you are moving on our behalf right now. God, we know that the joy and the peace that you bring is more than just a cliche in a season of the year, but God, it's, a, it's the truth of who you are and what you long to do in your people. So God, I pray right now that it could be more than a lyric in this moment, but that in our hearts and in our lives, God, we could begin joy beginning to rise up in the midst of our situation as we realize that you are strong and you are for us and you are with us and you go before us and you open doors that no man can shut. God, right now, we thank you for joy. We thank you for peace. God, we thank you for miracles. We thank you, God, that you're a miracle-working Savior. God, we look to you. We claim your promise and your provision in this place. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name. And if you believe and receive that right now, one more time, could you just turn that into worship and praise right now? God, you're so good. You're so worthy. We lift you up. We bless your name in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name.
Is that your prayer today? Come on, is that your prayer this morning? Do you want him to invade this house? Can we just lift our hands right now all across the room and just say, God, more than anything, we want you. We want your presence, Lord Jesus. We're here today to pour our love on you. Thank you, God. Invite me to sit down at your table where I can taste and I can see you are good and you are always faithful to welcome me the least of
right now We want it all Everything that you have for now Fill us up with your power Overflow The Holy Ghost Overflow Sing it one more time We want it all Up with your power, overflow, Holy Ghost, overflow. Now, if that's your prayer right now, will you just invite Him to do that in your own life? God, you overflow in me. God, overflow in this place. Let your will be done. Let your purpose be accomplished. You know, we were we were singing that was standing down there and I, I admit to you that my mind works a little weird sometimes as we were singing that I just wondered if sometimes we're singing that to God and I almost wonder if he's not whispering the same thing back to us I want it all everything that you have pour it out I, I just wonder sometimes if there's not a principle at play when we come into the house of God that you get what you give. Whatever you invest, you're gonna get back pressed down, shaken together and running over. And I just wonder sometimes if the miracle is not just on the other side of a little bit of, of pressing on our behalf. And I just wonder in this service today as we just get ready for whatever God's about to do, I wonder what would happen if in this place you and I decided, you know what, I am investing myself into this house, into God's presence, into this day, and I am giving, believing, expecting to receive, pressed down, shaken together, running over, because that's just the God that we serve. I believe that in my worship. I believe that in my praise. I believe that in my giving. I believe that in my prayer. I believe that in my faith. I believe we serve that kind of God. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here today. You can be seated for just a moment. Ushers, if you'll come, I do want to give you an opportunity to give in this place. And I want to thank you for being a giving church. You're such a generous group of people, and this church has been able to do some amazing things. You're going to hear more about that in just a moment. Some amazing things in this year and in years previous because you just embrace the call every time it's put forth to be generous and to let God use you to fulfill his purpose. And I wanna thank you for doing that. So we're gonna give you an opportunity right now to give of tithing and offering in this place and just trust that God's gonna do great things in you because of that. Will you pray with me right now, Lord Jesus? We thank you for your presence that we've already felt. God, we thank you that we know that you're moving and you're at work in this place today. God, we trust that every dollar we give in this offering, God, every bit of time, every bit of talent that we invest into your kingdom, God, we believe that you are faithful to bless it and, God, to do greater things with it than we could ever accomplish on our own. And, God, it's that security that allows us to, to sow without fear into your kingdom, knowing that you will do great things through whatever it is that we offer back to you. And so, God, we thank you for that privilege right now. And, God, we ask that you would bless every person that gives in this place and those who give online and God those who are not even in this room right now but God their their heart is being touched and they're saying I want to be a part of what you're doing God I pray your blessing would pour out in this place in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray and everybody said amen can you give him one more praise in this house God bless you as you give I do want to quickly draw your attention to just a couple of things Number one is that every month of the year, we do something here called First Steps, and it's just our way of helping people get plugged into the lifeblood of this church and into God's holy purpose that you were created with before you were even born. Now, the month of December, we do it just a little bit different. Every other month, we take four Sundays and we do four sessions, step one, step two, step three, step four. December is the fast track. So all the impatient people said, amen. All right, all right, I got you. 
All the impatient people, December is your month because we combine those four steps into two steps. Last Sunday, we did step one and step two. Today is step three and step four. We just want to invite you as soon as this service is over, if you would like to get plugged in and connected to a ministry or you'd like to get connected to a small group or you'd like to just find out more about becoming a member of this church, we've got something very special prepared for you right after this service. If you'll step out to the back right, you'll see some smiling people waving at you, inviting you in. We'll take about 45 minutes of your time and help you get connected. And we just want you to be a part of that step three and step four today, immediately after this service. Now, we have been in 100 days of filled, we've called it, just filled. It's, it's been an outreach initiative that uh, Lavelle and Britt and Jean have, have led in this church, and so many of you have gotten involved in, in different outreach opportunities, going out, connecting with, with people, connecting with the community, just doing great things for people, and inviting people into the church, into the house, and into the kingdom of God. That 100-day initiative concludes next Sunday with Christmas at First Church. We're gonna have an awesome Sunday. Uh, this First Church worship team is gonna be doing some, some great singing. There's, there's a little bit of drama. There's, there's always a little bit of drama around here, y'all. We're gonna, we're gonna even amp it up a little bit next Sunday. Next Sunday, intentionally for once, next Sunday is one of the easiest opportunities that you will have over the course of this year to invite somebody into the house of God. Did you know that statistically, 72% of people are inclined to attend a church service if they're just invited. So you know the, the number one reason that people don't come to church is that nobody invited them. So next Sunday is one of the easiest Sundays of the year for you to invite your neighbors, your coworkers, your family, even the ones you don't like. They need Jesus too. Invite them to Christmas at First Church next Sunday. You're gonna be hearing about next Sunday three opportunities to, to be a part of some really, really, really impacting initiatives that First Church is doing right here in our community. We're gonna tell you all about that next Sunday. But just take, take the time. You could pull out your phone right now and text somebody if you wanted to. This is one of those moments. I don't even care if you use your phone in church. I'm not gonna tell you to put it away. I'm telling you to take it out. Text somebody right now and say, hey, next Sunday morning at 10 a.m., we've got an awesome Sunday plan, and I would love for you to join me in this place and just see what God wants to do in your life this Christmas season. All right, I'm gonna go get out of the way and I'm gonna invite Pastor Gurley to come up and tell you about some really awesome things that have been happening around here and are going to happen in the very near future. Will you give him a hand as he comes right now? Hey everybody. I am seeing a lot of red in the building today. Now that we're not we're not in Spain, and I'm not a matador, so, you know, I mean, this is good. This is good, but I, we do sense the holidays upon us, and I want to share something with you, and I just feel like it's divinely ordained on this lousy weather day that we have Brother Josh Herring with us today for this morning. Amen? I was greeting people as they came in the service and they told me I'm here to be filled with the Holy Ghost I'm here to be baptized today you know what this is the great day to see a life change and after the first of the year we have purchased a number of brother Herring's new book called fast forward so you just go ahead and eat and have a great time these holidays but come January Brother Herring has a message for you, the power that is found in fasting. And we're going to be going through that book together in our 21 days of prayer and fasting after the first of the year. It was last Christmas, last Christmas that Pastor Tyler and I were just praying about what to do. This church is the giving church. Uh, I got a letter. I opened it this morning uh, from Global Missions. And do you know, as of July 1 to June 30 of this year, this church gave a little over $400,000 to Global Missions. You're the second giving church in the nation. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. You say, Pastor, why would we do that? We could use this money right here. We could. We could. But I was raised in a church that said there is a harvest worldwide, and we've got to reach our harvest. 
But it was last Christmas, Pastor Tyler and I said, what are we going to do this Christmas? We didn't really have money. We've been doing a lot of remodeling and paying for it with cash. And, and uh, what are we going to do? With what? And we just felt that we wanted to bless church planners in North America, people that were starting churches. And so we just started sending money out of the blue to people we didn't hardly know, but had a good report and they were doing a great work. And I can't tell you the phone calls we began to receive. People crying, whole families, FaceTiming, Zooming us, saying we were at our wits end. We couldn't pay our bills. Thank the First Church family for coming through for us. It was so rewarding, it was so rewarding that this year at General Conference, I, I'm telling you what, we were moved. What we gave last year, we're gonna try to do five times this much this year. Now, this in this next week or two, you're going to be exposed to some marvelous opportunities that you can bless in various areas. And this is the time, this is the season to get generous. But I, I just felt, Pastor Tyler and I felt it at General Conference that we wanted to do this. And uh, we wanted to involve you in it. Last year, we just wrote checks from the money we could scrape together. But this year, we want to involve you in it. And it was, I believe, providential that we found out Brother Herring was coming through because Brother Herring is one of the kind of people we're talking about. The last time you saw him, he was an evangelist. Now he's a pester. That's what I call pastors. He's a pester. He has switched his ministry and uh, our prayers are with him, but he's gone to North Dallas. He is ministering in an area in North Dallas that when you look at one side to the other side of the area he's ministering, you're looking at about over a million people, and I think we have three churches in that area. This is what we're trying to do. And so when you hear Brother Herring today, and I don't know what he's going to preach, I don't know what he feels like preaching, but I can promise you the power of heaven will come down in this building if we decide to actually live what we've been singing that we're going to give God all and everything inside of us. If you commit to that, would you stand right now and would you make welcome our most favorite evangelist turned pastor, Brother Josh Herring. Make him welcome here today. And praise the Lord, everybody. If you love Bishop and Pastor Whaley, would you clap your hands and thank the Lord for such an amazing leadership team. We're so honored to be with you today. I'm so thankful I get to preach and leave all the problems behind. Just have, I thought church ended as an evangelist for 20 years. I thought church ended when we left the altar service. I have discovered that church does not end when we leave the altar service. And it goes on all day and all night and all week. But I am so thankful, and I'll tell you more about the church that we've got going. Revival has definitely hit, and we're thankful for what the Lord is doing. But it's an honor to be with you this morning. Love you very much. Appreciate the opportunity to be here. It's, a, it's always a blessing and a, such a high privilege. Second Corinthians chapter 11. Give honor to my beautiful wife, Janae, and our four children who said, Daddy, I thought we were done doing this yesterday. I thought we were done getting in the car and driving. I said, no, it's, it's still there, babe. It's still there. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 23 through 30. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool, I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren and weariness and painfulness and watchings often in hunger and thirst and fastings often in cold and nakedness beside 
those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches, who is weak, and I am not weak, and who is offended, and I burn not. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. I was praying throughout the last few days and waiting on the Lord, and, and he usually talks to me Sunday morning, uh, even though I, I beg him to talk to me Saturday night. And he's still not doing that. We're still arguing about that, and I'm, I'm losing. But this morning, he spoke this to me, and I want to preach to you from the subject, the mission must be miserable. It's, it's an amazing Christmas title. The mission must be miserable. Lord Jesus, thank you for this amazing season. Thank you for what you're about to do in this place today. We love you. We appreciate the spirit we feel in this room, and I pray that you would do whatever you want to do and open up every heart, every mind, every family to the will of the Lord today, I pray in Jesus' name. If you love him, would you clap your hands to him one more time? Aren't you thankful? And you may be seated. Everybody that lives for the Lord loves it when you get a dream from God or a vision or a calling or a ministry or an open door, a promise, something that the Lord wants to do in your life and through you and you get to be a part of it. And it's so exciting when God calls your name or your family's name to step up to the plate and to become involved in the kingdom and do something beyond what you thought you could do and and those dreams begin to burn in your spirit and and it, the signal to God dream first of all is it can't happen tomorrow can't happen today if you can make the dream happen with your own resources then it's not a God dream it's your own dream but a God dream is always something that feels impossible at the moment and almost too far away to ever get there but yet there's some kind of fire that burns inside of you that yes this is going to happen and you get excited and you tell people about it and you are motivated for what God's about to do kind of like Joseph was when he woke up that morning and he had dreamed that 11 stars and the sun and the moon had bowed down before him and he went over to his 11 brothers and his mom and dad and said hey I had this amazing dream 11 stars bowed down and the sun and the moon bowed down before me and they misinterpreted the dream like almost all preachers do and they said do you think that we're all going to bow down you you're talking about your 11 brothers and your mom and your dad and and they all thought he was saying the family's going to bow down before me but the problem with that interpretation was before joseph's dream would come true mom would die so therefore that couldn't have been the interpretation of what was being said every other dream joseph had though involved time seven years of feasting seven Seven years of famine three days you'll be restored three days you will die and he said 13 things guys were bowing down to me he was 17 years old when he spoke that dream he was 30 years old 13 years later when the whole world bowed down before him in other words what he was actually seeing and did not realize what he was seeing was in 13 years the entire world will bow down before you. But in between the dream and the destiny, all hell broke loose. It's almost like God gives you a glimpse of what's going to be amazing and then gives the demons the keys to the car and says, I'm going to let the adversary drive you to your destiny. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? You get a promise from God that seems to be amazing, but as soon as you start to pursue it, everything begins to resist you. How many people have told me already in just six months of pastoring, I was doing fine until I pursued what God had for me the devil left me alone I was comfortable but the second I decided to go after it and be involved in the kingdom the enemy attacked me because the promise and the fulfillment 
are beautiful, but there's a journey. There's a road in between those two things, and that road is perilous. That road is rough, and that road is difficult. I, I, I know that we love the story of the angel visiting Mary. Can you imagine being a teenage kid and Gabriel coming into your home and saying, I am Gabriel, and I here's, here's what's about to happen. You are going to have a baby, and the Holy Ghost is overshadowing you, and you're going to have the Messiah. You are the one chosen out of the entire planet. And she's like, what, me? What a moment. Seems pretty good. But what he forgot to mention, when you go tell your boyfriend, he'll want to dump you. That's just 2022 language. He, uh, when, uh, when you tell everybody else, they'll, they'll cast you out. In fact, when you have the baby, you will have him in a barn and you will lay him in a manger. And when you have this baby, all the other mothers that are pregnant, their babies will be killed because you're having a baby. And then the king will chase you out of the, not the town, not the state, out of the nation. And you'll have to live in a different country until the king dies and not know anybody and just stay there and hide until I give you word. And when you come back. And your little boy is 12. You'll lose him for three days in a crowd of thousands of people and almost lose your mind. And 33 and a half years after he's born, when your husband's already dead, by the way, you will watch your son be publicly executed naked in front of a crowd. Do you still want the promise? But if you endure that, you will go up to an upper room and you will be pregnant a second time and he will come inside of you again and this time you'll never have to let go because that same Jesus that you birth and you watch die will rise from the grave he will ascend into heaven and then he will pour out his spirit upon the earth and you'll be one shut up of the first ones that receives the miracle the mission will be miserable but the mission will be worth it when it's over because you will receive the reward for what you endure want the microwave miraculous ministry God to give it, tell me about it today and then give it to me this afternoon and there's something about that, that mentality that says I want it now that does not please the Lord he gives you a promise then expects you to wait and expects you to endure he told Nehemiah go rebuild the wall and when he got there as soon as he started building the enemy started mocking him if you read the six layers of things they did it's, it's incredible the step that they took they began to laugh at him and mock him they got angry at him they accused him they went through a different step each time that they confronted him about what he was doing he was trying so hard to do a work for God and every time he got one block laid here came the enemy and began to confront him until finally they said come down off the wall and we want to talk to you in the valley and Nehemiah's response still gets to my spirit because when he looked back at the enemy who was trying to stop him from doing something explosive he said with an unbuilt wall with an unfinished wall he said I am doing a, a great work and the enemy was mocking him but there was something about Nehemiah that looked back at hell and said even though you don't believe me I believe that what I'm doing has greatness involved with it and some of you need to eyeball the devil right now and say I am doing something great for God I am not a nobody I am not invisible I will not disappear I have something to do in the kingdom First place I went to when we got to Frisco to find a building was the school district. We'd emailed people and they had told us, we'll help you out. And so we made an appointment, we went in, I went in and the lady met me at the door and she was not one of the ones we emailed. And she, she said, what are you here for? And I said, I'm here to start a church in North Dallas in Frisco. And I was 
told by some of your coworkers through emails that the school district would be a great place to start to find a building. And she laughed and said, well, I've got a message for you. You will not find favor in this city or with the school district. Have a good day. I said, before I leave, I want you to take my name down. Because when you do see our church in the future in this city, you will know you were wrong. She laughed and said, I'll take your name and your email, sir. I said, good, write it down. And she laughed me out of the door. But I've made, and I'll tell you more later, but I've made up my mind. That has motivated me every single day. That as soon as, if, let me say something. If they would have said, sure, we'll give you a cute little room. That would have told me they're not worried about me being there. Because hell loves to coexist with people who are not a threat. But when they said, you are not going to make it here, it let me know immediately I am in the will of God. And I am going to see revival break loose in that city if it's the last thing we do. Weightness or greatness has a weight to it that you need to understand. Paul beginning to describe everything he went through. He said, I went through this and I went through that. Every time I tried to do something for the kingdom, it was miserable. People made it miserable. Life made it miserable. Nature made it. I would never go on a cruise with Paul. Every time the guy got in the boat, it sank. Every time. Hey, this looks a nice boat. Oh, Paul's, I'm not going. Paul steps on the boat, you immediately leave the boat. No matter what's on the boat, no matter what food they're serving, you leave. Because you're going to drown. Paul said, I was, I was hit with a whip five times with 40 stripes, save one, so 39 stripes. I have 195 scars on my back. For preaching this. People, I had to fly coach last week. You probably don't want to read 2 Corinthians 11 when you're complaining about flying coach. Because Paul said, if it was a boat, it sank. If I was around people, they, they attacked me. If I, I spent the night in the, in the ocean, in the water. I, there was nothing I could do. I was stoned. I was beaten with rods thrice. One time I walked up to a man. He said, I'm just like the apostle Paul. Thrice I was stoned. I said, did you say thrice? He said, yes, three, that means three times. I know what it means. It's, you know, most people don't say thrice. And he said, thrice I was stoned, young man. I said, you were stoned three times. He said, yes. I said, well, tell me about it. He said, well, it was all in, in a dream. I said, see you. You're a quack. Bye. You weren't stoned. Paul was literally stoned with rocks three times. He, they, over, he, they stoned him one time and he got up. They thought he was dead. He dusted himself off and kept preaching. There's a price to pay for something amazing. One year ago, on thank I'm going to get off my notes. One year ago, on Thanksgiving, the day, two days before Thanksgiving, I, could not, I was still evangelizing, and we could not shake the fact that for three years, we had felt like we were supposed to pastor in Dallas, and it was, it was not leaving, and it was almost tormenting. And so I was in the house and I was praying and I didn't know what to do. And the Lord whispered something to me. He said, he said, I want you to take $500 and mail it to a pastor in Dallas as a seed for that city. And I said, what's that going to do? He said, just obey me. So the day before Thanksgiving, I go to the post office and I mail out this random seed to a pastor. And I said, Lord, I don't know what this means, but here it goes. And I sent the seed to the Dallas area. That was the day before Thanksgiving. The Friday after Thanksgiving, Bishop Gurley called me. The check was, hadn't even gotten to Dallas yet. It was, on the, it was on the flight there. And I was in Florida, and Bishop calls me and said, Do you still want a pastor in Dallas? When Bishop calls, first of all, you answer. Or pastor, for that matter. For those that are earning. Anyway. And then... When he asks you a question like that, you know there's something behind it. Bishop doesn't call me and ask me that. And I was like, yeah. And in my mind, I'm thinking, what pastor is resigning? I'm just being real. 
because, you know, we want the easy road. What pastor is willing to hand it off for the next layer of revival? So I'm going down my, uh, maybe he, uh, he's pretty old. Uh, maybe. This guy, he needs to quit. Uh, and Bishop says, you need to call the presbyter in the North Dallas area. There's a whole mass area in the North Dallas area with no churches. And I was like, ooh. You mean I got to give up preaching for churches like you every week? But I said, yes, sir. And so I said, okay. So I called the presbyter. And he said, we have an area that needs a church. There's three or four cities right here. There's, there's Frisco, and there's Plano, and there's Prosper, and there's Allen, and there's McKinney, and there's Richardson, and there's a big cluster of cities, and there's, there's about a million people in this whole area, and we need a church, and we need one in Frisco especially. And I said, Frisco, I've never been to Frisco. And I'm sitting there going, is this really what I'm supposed to do? I mean, I'm preaching at all the fun churches. We're having revival. This is, this is doing well for our family. And so we drove up to North Dallas and we went to Frisco and Plano and I couldn't, there's a highway that divides the two and on the line, both sides are really nice. In fact, Frisco is one of the richest cities in America. And it's literally, it has everything. There's a one mile road in Frisco called the $30 billion road because there's $30 billion of businesses on that one road. And as soon as I drove into the city, the spirit, something, something spoke to me and said, you're an ant. We don't need you here. We met the board. We didn't know, should we go to Plano or Frisco? Plano seemed, just, I'm just going to be very honest with you. Plano seemed a little easier because there was a, there used to be an apostolic church there. And there was a harvest of backsliders there. And we heard a report that if we started one in Plano, people would come. And we thought that would be the easier route. Still to this day, it would probably be the easier route. But when God calls you to a mission... If there's no misery, you sent yourself. If there's no adversaries, you're not at a great and effectual door. Because adversaries are attracted doors that are effectual and can do big things. And so if you're at an open door and everything's cute and cozy and comfortable and rosy, there's no devils around it because there's no harvest on the other side of it. But if there's something there, then they fight you every step of the way and so i we we met the board we said we're gonna go with frisco it's the jewel of this in fact bishop Gurley told him that's the one to go with go with frisco i said okay it's the jewel of this of the dallas area they told me that north texas district said it's the jewel of our district it's the spot we can't seem to get a church in that needs a church the most because everyone there acts like they don't need a church you can't give away backpacks and expect a bunch of people to show up. You have to give away Teslas. <laughs> and even then, they're like, eh, it's only a 2022. It's, 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 it's unbelievable. It's, it's overwhelming. It's, it's, it's scary. It's not like, hey, go to this place and everybody's hungry for God. It's go to a place where everyone thinks they don't need God. In fact, they think they are God. And they worship their own money. Dallas Cowboys headquarters is there. PGA Golf just moved their headquarters globally to right there in Frisco. Charles Schwab, J.P. Morgan Chase. I can go down the list. Dr. Pepper headquarters. It's, it's business after business just sitting there. And you go in. And we're like, well, here we are. And we get approved and we move there. First week, we've been there six months. Last week, we've been six months. We get there, and our 
We're like, well, where do, we, where do we go? We don't know anybody here. We don't know. So I recruited a team. I said, I need help. And so I, some of the young guys I mentored began to pray and fast. And they started praying about moving to Frisco. And, and, and about 20 of them moved from across the country to help me get started. And our first service was in a hotel room at the Hampton Inn, a little conference room that seated about 50, 60 people. And they said, you can have this as long as you want. And so we had a great church that morning. Sister Flo Shaw came and led us in prayer. She was in town. We didn't even know it. And, and she prayed over our our revival and and we started believing God for it to happen and, and, and it was explosive and one person got the Holy Ghost and we thought well we're in the will of God one person was healed we said we're definitely doing it right and then when we got ready for Wednesday night service and and we already booked it and paid for it and and Tuesday we we went in to check on everything and they said oh by the way we made a mistake giving you the hotel room the person that let you have the room didn't know there was a contract you can't have the room but we have people come to church tomorrow. I said, well, sorry, you're not, you're not having it here. Okay. So we went to another hotel, and they said, yeah, you can use this little room. And so we, we were there for about a month, and one pastor, an ex-United Pentecostal church pastor, walked into the, I know who he was, walked in the back door, and he sat down as I was preaching my guts out to about 20 people in a, in a hotel room. And he walked up and said, let's have a message for you. You're trying to plant a church in the graveyard of churches. Have a good day. Thank you. And so I kept preaching. 20, the first week. Our launch date was October 16th, and we were just trying our best to build momentum. And then 25, and we got to 30, and 35, and 40. And, and we found this theater. This little theater that seats about two, 170 people. And, 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 and we found it, and we went in. And they said, yes, you can lease it from us. You can have it on Sundays and Wednesdays, but it's going to be about $6,000 a month for those two hours Wednesday night and those four hours Sunday morning. But it was the only thing we, so we said yes. And the Lord says to me, so I'm thinking, okay, here we are. So I go to preach a camp meeting in a Texaco camp meeting, where that's at, Amarillo. And the Lord says, give this district $5,000 from your church. I said, uh. <laughs> Our church is barely a church. We have to give them like almost 6000 every month. Give them. I said, okay. Here you go. Hope you have Revival. Lord bless you. <laughs> Come home. We go to our district camp meeting. It's, it's Friday night. Sam Emery's preaching, and I'm on the back. There's about 3,000 people, and the Lord says, give this district 5,000. I said, <laughs> I don't know what spirit's talking to me, but I rebuke this in Jesus' name. <laughs> You're rebuking me? <laughs> So I write the check out while he's preaching, and I tell my assistant pastor, I said, hey, we're giving nothing. He's like, okay, pastor, whatever you feel. I felt like Paul, like, we're going down. <laughs> pastor intentionally sinks church, giving to everyone else. And so he's preaching on sacrifice, and I'm thinking, well, here we go. This is God, yeah. And I'm thinking, come on, you know, let's go, let's give, let's give, let's give. No one goes up to give. So I'm like, well, all right. So I walk up to the front with my check. He's singing in the altar call, and I said, Bishop Emery, he said, yeah, I said, the spirit of giving's here, and here's, uh, here's $5,000 to the district from our church. He hands me the mic. Remember, we did, we've been in this district like six minutes. We already have people that don't like us. Why is he coming here? You know, people love you as long as you're... <laughs> Not in their area. He goes, tell it to the congregation. I said, I don't think they'll receive this very well. He said, tell us. So I get up and I'm like, the spirit of giving's in this room. Our church will give the first 5,000. Nobody even burped, clapped, sighed. Well, maybe a few people sighed, but that's about it. The longest walk of my life was from that pulpit to the side of that platform. I was like, well, that was completely humiliating. 
Way to make an awesome opening impression of the district. You fool. Should have gone to Houston. <laughs> and the superintendent, Bishop Flowers, he walks up behind me and says, last year at our camp meeting, we raised $250,000 for North American churches. It's the will of God. We've, we've given all the churches a portion of that that we started. It's the will of God to bless the churches in this district. And in five minutes, $259,000 was on the altar. What happened to us? More tax. Preacher called the board on me. He, I saw him looking at a building close to the Frisco line, even though it's still in Frisco. He's too close. That's unity. Preachers were in our, across the streets, literally across the street at our outreach, spying on us at our own building. Yes, sir, keep going. Keep pushing. People getting mad. People attacking. People attacking us. People promised to help us disappeared. Here we go, God. Call this preacher. Bring him in. Give him sacrifice. Give him thousands. Give this preacher thousands. What in the world? We started growing and growing and growing. We got to our launch date, October 16th. And the, the service began before church started with this call. Hey, pastor, the, the air conditioning's out. It's 97 degrees. That's great. Hey, pastor, this is going on. The baptistry was stolen. We have portable. I mean, I know this, you have a nice baptistry, but we have this portable deal, and we had to hide it in the trees behind the building. It had been there for five, four months. It gets stolen the day of our launch. Who steals a baptistry? You need the baptistry if you're stealing it. I don't care how many times you've been baptized, dude. Got me a new baptistry. What are you doing with that? Baptistry's been stolen. Better not preach baptism. I turned my phone off. You know, you get the next call. I won't be there, Pastor. I won't be there, Pastor. I love those, by the way. I'm learning something about pastoring. Turn your phone off two hours before church because every text and call is negative. I won't be there. I won't be there. I don't feel like coming. I don't feel like coming. My dog is sick. My dog is sick. I have homework. I have homework. Have a good night. I like saying I understand. Sorry, I'm making someone mad right now. I'm sorry. So all these things... We get into the house of God. I think I gave some slides. I want to show you the, the service. Put the first picture up if you don't mind. We had 116 people at our first service. I know it's not this. Put the next slide up. And then the next one, I brought our leadership team to the front, and we celebrated. We did the little glitter thing. It was fun. Cannons being shot at us. That was unexpected. And I thought, man, this is going to be awesome. Like, boom. We're taking over. And then they tell us the building's being sold. Huh? We, they didn't tell us. My church people told me. The people we are renting it from are selling it and not telling us. 3.4 million for a building that's just an empty, a building that's a theater that seats 170 people with no rooms for Sunday school, no rooms for any classes. We have to do 
a Sunday school and then a class the discipleship after in the same room and trying to just move things around and set up every oh, that's that fun stuff, you know, really fun stuff. And they're selling it for 3.4 million. Like 4,000 square feet. So I called the manager. I said, hey, man, I noticed your building is for sale. And each time, Bishop, I've tried to get a contract with them, they've told me we have a contract for you to sign, and then they forget to bring it. I'm like, but it's supposedly ours for a year, Sundays and Wednesdays. And we're saying, okay. And he said, don't worry, Josh, it's not going to be sold. Our investors want to sell it. You're the only one renting it from us, basically. And our investors want to sell it, but we're not even trying to really sell. We, we put such an astronomical price that no one will buy it. I, I believe it. I was like, oh, okay. Makes sense. And I looked at all the other buildings in the area. 6.8 million. 5.6 million. 4.2 million. I'm like, this is the cheapest bill. <laughs> they are trying to sell it. <laughs> and then they lowered it again to 2.9 last week. And I walked in and I said, hey, man, I see it's lowered again. He said, yeah, they really want to sell it. And we're talking to the city about it. But don't worry, if the city rent, it's going to be much higher if the city buys it for you to rent it, but you're okay. Then we looked at what they were playing in the theater when we weren't there. We went online and they were having zombie shows and uh, sorcery things. And we're going, what in the world? This is our church. And they're having everything wicked possible when we're not in the room selling it out from underneath us, but we're having revival. In the last two months, nine people have received the Holy Ghost. This is in an area where no one, no one needs it. Everybody's saved. Everyone's got everything. I don't have the slide. I should have given it to you, but we baptized Big John a month ago, or a little over a month ago, in his pool at his mansion when he showed up to our church and said, hey, I've lost everything in the stock market. Everything I have is gone. My mom's got cancer. Would you baptize? We baptized her. We baptized him in Jesus' name. They both have the Holy Ghost. I don't know what we're doing half the time, but I know one thing. God sent me. The mission is miserable, but there will be something that happens. And across this nation, I know it's beautiful in here. But as I was praying last night, the Lord said to tell you, there are wars that you know not of in this country right now with pastors trying their best to carve something out. And I'm telling you, we're in the will of God. Something's going to happen. We will see that break forth. We will have that revival. Stand to your feet. My friend, my friend Mark Brown was preaching the other day and I was listening to him preach. He was talking about the South Dakota district and this new town that they were starting a church in and they were getting the building that week and they were putting the sign up. As I listened to him say they were putting the sign up because every morning, let me just back up, every morning from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., our church prays on the phone corporately. One hour, the tabernacle prayer, six days a week, like clockwork, every single day, we pray together. And at the end of the prayer, we pray for a miracle building. Just being honest. Because you know when your building's being sold, you kind of need something, to, you know, somewhere to go. And I, we prayed that that morning, and I'm listening to him preach a couple hours later and about the new building and whatever. And a spirit spoke to me and said, ha, he's getting a new building. You can't even get a sign. And it made me so mad. Like the old Josh was like, hmm. If you were a human, I would beat you into the ground. Sorry, oops. Just cut that. Because <laughs> it was such a mocking spirit. I know we have a burden for overseas. We give it. We give it globally. But there are cities right here in this country with millions of people and you're trying to tell them you need the Lord. 
One guy walked in a month ago, off the sh up, works at the Hyatt Regency where one of our guys works, and he walked in, co-worker, suit, tie, and in three weeks, he has brought three guests of his own, and he's faithful to everything. People that I didn't know existed on this planet. People that have everything. When I, we drove through the, 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 the skyscrapers, we drove through the, through the, the neighborhoods with all the mansions, and they're everywhere, and you feel so underprepared, and you feel so... Like you don't fit in. 97% of Frisco has a degree. Think about that. Two homeless people in the city. They both go to our church. But one got an apartment this week. Every Saturday, we, if it's weather permitting, we go out in the streets and we, we knock the doors and we, we get told everything. A couple weeks ago, we went out in the streets and two other churches were on the same road we were. And we were racing to the doors. Literally. Me and the other pastor were like a... And so he went to one door and I went over to the next one. And then I, and if they didn't answer it real quickly, I put a flyer and I went to the next one. I'm hungry for a revival. If I'm going to go, I believe that you go big or you go home. Sometimes you do both. <laughs> but I believe if, if you're leaving the field of 20 years, preaching in all the amazing churches, and God sends you somewhere to start something, you can't go in there. Well, I hope you send it to us. You gotta go there willing to die and say, no matter what happens, God, hey, I'm here. <laughs> Last month, the giving dropped through the ground. I had to pay the church. I had to pay the house. Stuff that was supposed to be for was taken care of. I paid it all. And every voice in the in possible, just go evangelize. Just go, just go back to the field. Just go back to where it's easy. Homeschooling three kids because the school, the Christian school down the road is $13,000 a month for three children. Let that sink in. It's not easy. It's miserable most of the time. But when you see people come to the altar that you never would have met, heard about your church, I calculated, Bishop, when there's six months, every single service we've had a guest. Every single, we've had service every Sunday and every Wednesday, and every service we've had at least one guest, and usually a lot more. Last week on a Wednesday night, two weeks ago, we had 19 guests on Wednesday night. I'm after. Your pastor... Pastor Whaley called me and told me what you were feeling as a church and asked me to preach on North American Missions churches. And, and I'm only six months into it. And I'm, I'm in a, I, if I've ever been in a dog fight with hell, I'm in one right now. You don't know what's going to happen from month to month. You don't know. But I know one thing. I've given everything I can. And I know that to have 115 people four months into a service, into a, into a, into a, what, you didn't know anybody there, that doesn't normally happen. That is God telling you that there's something amazing happening. <laughs> and whatever you do for churches in America, I want you to know one thing. When you bring the provision, David, to your brothers who are in the thickets and in the caves of war, it will be just a moment of time before you are slaying the giant and you are anointed the king and everyone looks to you as the sword. I don't know what this church is going to do across this nation, but I believe God has set you up because you are going to be a source of revival, not just globally. You've done that, but I believe North America is about... Is about to have revival in ways they can never explain. Would you lift up your voice? Would you lift up your hands? Would you receive a word from the Lord that the mission is miserable, but there's a reward? He endured the cross, despising the shame for the joy that was set before him.
Sometimes we want it all, and all we get is we get to go through it all. Mega churches everywhere around the North Dallas area. Bishop can tell you, but Pastor Willie can tell you. At least 80 mega churches that seat thousands and thousands and thousands of people. None of them preaching truth. 80. I'm talking like the average is 5,000. When you have a Starbucks in your lobby, The spirit world every day that I wake up says you're invisible. You don't have a sign. You can't even put a sign on the building because you, you don't, no one even knows where you are. And I stagger into church every Wednesday night and every Sunday. And I see a new guest show up and I say, someone knows where we are. Someone found out. Someone's found out. I'm going to ask Pastor Gurley to come up here right now. I'm going to ask Pastor Pastor Whaley too. I, I don't know what the will of the Lord is for, for North American missions for your church. I don't, but I do know what they felt the Holy Ghost say to them, and I trust them, and I know you trust them too. And so they told me, Pastor Whaley told me, just preach and then talk about your city, and, and there's going to be giving we failed to give to North American missions. I don't know what that entails for this church. But I will tell you in the Holy Ghost that when you give, it will come back. Good measure. Pressed down. Shaken together. Running over. In a form of revival. When you can't fit the people in the room. We're already almost, we're already almost, this building, we have had it. We, the parking lot, every single service on Sundays is filled. We don't have a parking space. We park across the street. We've been kicked out of that place. We're parking there. <laughs> I'm telling you in the Holy Ghost, for every, you're hearing my story, but there's hundreds and thousands of pastors, especially hundreds across the, this area in the Midwest and in the South that are trying to start churches in the Northeast, trying Northwest even, trying to start churches that have the same type of story. You're fighting and you feel invisible. No matter what conference you preach, no matter how much they love you, you go back to a spirit world that says, not here. But I've made up my mind, Frisco might wanna be Babylon. It might wanna be whatever. It might have everything imaginable and then more to offer people to feed their flesh. I went to a meeting with the mayor and we met the mayor and, and everybody, and then afterwards I, tech, I emailed him and I said, how about an idea, prayer with the mayor, and I'll get a bunch of pastors. He didn't respond, but did the prayer with the mayor the next month, but he charged everyone to come pray. You had to pay to come pray with the mayor. That's where we're at. It's the will of God for a breakthrough in provision across this country. I don't think it's the will of God for our churches to be invisible. I believe, and it's been prophesied to me so many times in the last six months that God's going to give us a church of 5,000 people in Frisco, Texas, and I receive that word. I, I know it sounds crazy, but I, it sounds like I'm, you probably think you're rolling your eyes at me. It's okay, because it's, it is hard to believe, but I believe it. And if I don't believe it, I could, I, I'll be pressured. I have to believe that something big is coming for me to stay under the pressure. And you need to believe that something is worth it to stay under the pressure because the pressure can be overwhelming. But on the other side of the pressure, there's a promise from God that hell cannot stop and hell cannot put out. I'm going to give this mic to Bishop and I'm going to ask you to close your eyes and I'm going to ask you to bow your head and ask the Lord for what you're supposed to do in this country. Because the pressure is insurmountable. But I tell you in the Holy Ghost that revival is breaking loose and hell cannot stop it. In the crevices 
of the caves of hell. There's a light that's walking through the darkness saying, we're here, we're here, and we are going to see it happen. I walked into this building today and, and I said, Lord, what would you have us do? I don't believe it was an accident that I got that letter from Global Missions, over 400,000 you gave the last fiscal year. And the Holy Ghost said, don't you think you ought to give at least half as much to reach your Jerusalem and your Judea and your Samaria before you reach the uttermost parts of the earth? When Josh, Brother Harry, just a moment ago, when you said $259,000, is that what you said? The Holy Ghost just hit me and said, that's what I would like for this church to give. $259,000. I want you right now to lay a hand on a shoulder of somebody and just say, let's bind together and let's believe that in faith right now. Can we just do that? Ho, ho, ho. Jesus, we're celebrating you this season, the one that gave all. You gave all. You emptied yourself, Lord. Came to planet Earth, God. We're celebrating your, your coming here at Christmas, Lord. We're celebrating, God. But we know that you came for a mission, Lord. A, a mission that required you to give all. At this season of the year, God, uh, we're asking you to lay it on someone's heart. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in this room right now. We're asking you to lay something on somebody's heart of what they can do before year's end. We're asking you, oh Lord, to put it in their heart right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, uh, I believe the Holy Ghost is in this room. Uh, the Holy Ghost is in this house right now. Oh, in the name of the Lord, uh, in the name of the Lord. Lord, I feel your presence, oh God. I feel your presence, oh Lord. Oh God, oh God. You have blessed someone in this room. You have blessed all of us in this room. God, I'm asking you, Lord, to give unto somebody in this house, God, a tremendous burden. Lay a weight on their shoulder right now that say, I'm going to make a difference in the life of someone that's carrying the gospel to a city in North America. I'm going to be what keeps them in the harvest field. I'm going to be the one that someday will stand before you, Lord, and worship with people that are saved from all over North America, God, that I had the opportunity of participating in their salvation, oh God. I pray right now. I pray right now in this building. Hallelujah. I want to ask all of you right now across this room, I want you to start gathering around this altar as quickly and as quietly as you can. We're going to have a prayer service in a moment. Holy Ghost is going to fall. People are going to be healed. Lives are going to be changed. But before we do that, we're going to put some all on the altar right now. Feel the Holy Ghost. Uh, feel the Holy Ghost. Ushers, here's what I need you to do. Ushers, if you could help me. Greeters, Pastor Tyler, just step over here with me just a moment. I'm going to have you do something. Would you bring some offering envelopes? Yes, old-fashioned offering envelopes or slips of paper. There may be somebody that said, Brother Gurley, I, I, I'm going to make a big pledge today. I, I can't give it today, but I'm going to make a big pledge. And I want it recorded and I wanted it memorialized. So ushers, if you'd lay, find some pens as well. Autumn, somebody in the office, find us some pens. And just lay some of these all across the altar right now if you want to do that. I, I know my wife and I, I, I'm going to go stand by my wife, and I know we do this every year. This is something that you don't know. I'm just going to get transparent. Many, 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 many years I stopped getting a paycheck from this church in about the month of June because there are so many needs at the end of the year that I want to make sure that there's enough money to meet those needs. I, whatever glory or whatever reward I get, I just, got lo I just lost that. But we do that because we believe in what's happening around here. And we believe in transmitting that burden across this nation and across this world. 
The Holy Ghost is telling us America is having an awakening. America is going to have an awakening. I don't know how it's coming, but I believe somehow what we're doing here today is unlocking the potential for God to begin to do something in other places. Let's unleash the Holy One of Israel. Can we do that? Step as close as you can. Keep stepping closer. Get as many people as close as you can. We're going to, we're just going to take a moment to pray and to worship. And, uh, and, and I, I, I feel very strongly, very strongly that God is watching right now. And God is waiting to reward. You've been through a miserable couple of years. Let's come out of these miserable couple of years saying, God, we care about the souls of America. We're going to reach the United States. We're going to reach Canada. We're going to reach the provincial areas around us, the territories. We are going to see revival in this place. Would you, as they sing, just get with your family and begin to pray and begin to discuss. In a moment, they're going to put a slide up on the screen for giving. But before they do, I want Pastor Tyler to come and one more time to pray over the pledge or the offering that you're about to. Dear Lord, your word says that he who blesses others will be blessed. And God, we step into that principle right now. God, as we prepare to give in this place, as we prepare our hearts for intentional generosity, God, we understand that we're not taking an offering for this church, we're not taking an offering for ourselves, but God, we are desiring as a church to be a blessing to others because God, we realize that when we get our eyes on global harvest, when we get our eyes on the nation that we are called to impact, God, we realize that it's through pursuing that and perceiving that, that we open doors to blessings and revival here that nothing else will open. So God, right now, I pray that a spirit of giving and a spirit of generosity for others would truly grip our hearts. God, we are a church that pursues others. God, it is an intentional expressed purpose of this church. And today, God, we put our money where our mouth is. God, we are not others focused in word only, but God, with everything inside of us, we prepare our hearts to be a blessing to others. God, to equip other churches, to see doors open for other churches. God, to be a blessing to other pastors. God, to lift up heavy hands that hang down. God, you see so many pastors across our nation who get up every morning and they pray, God, if you don't move today, we don't know if we can exist even one more week. God, let us be the answer to a prayer today. God, as you've already begun to move in our hearts, God, as you've already begun to grip our spirit as Pastor Herring has preached today, God, I pray that right now we could put action to that, God. We could put commitment. God, you are speaking to hearts and lives right now. God, a specific number. God, you are you are speaking to many people in this room what seems to be a stretch. And God, it's through that stretch that we will open doors to impossible things in our families and in our city and in our church. God, we we thank you for every blessing that you've poured out on us. But God, it is not without purpose that you've given us all that we have. But God, we are blessed to be a blessing. And so right now, God, as your spirit of conviction begins to move in this house and in our hearts, God, as you begin to speak numbers and as you begin to speak possibilities to us, God, let us respond. Let us hear you, God. Let us be willing to go. Let us be willing to give. Let us be willing to be the church that says, you know what? We will sacrifice we will reach we will stretch because God you've given so much to us let us in turn give more for you oh God because God it's for your kingdom it's for your purpose God not for our church but for your church globally God for your church nationally we give we expend ourselves we stretch ourselves God we join and we we say right now that it is our privilege to spend and be spent for you. 
So God, right now, will you speak to hearts? Will you speak to lives? God, let a spirit of generosity and giving begin to grip our hearts in this place, God. God, let us give not just out of convenience or abundance, but God, let the need grip our hearts and let us respond in a way that says, God, we hear you and we are for your kingdom and we are for your purpose. God, we hear your calling. We hear your calling. And God, we respond right now in this room. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. So the giving slide is on the screen. And I promise you, Brother Herring doesn't know this, but I promise you, my heart was moved when I heard 6,000 a month. We're going to help the Herrings. We're going to help the Herrings. They've been a blessing to us. But to do that, and I'm telling some of you online, and I want you to share this, we're going to need some of you that God has inordinately blessed to give 10, 25, 50, even 100,000 so that everybody can do their part. We want to do our part. Are you ready? You may can pledge online. Is that correct? You could pledge online as well. If not, here is the giving slide, just a QR code if you want to pull out your phone and uh, start giving. And this is the code that you will use. Or if you want to make a note on uh, one of these cards up here, if you want to give, just lay it on the altar. This is our emblem that it's all on the altar. Would you lift your hearts and let's begin to pray as God begins to move on his people to give sacrificially and abundantly. Let's worship the Lord together as we do that. I feel his presence. I feel his presence in this room. Who, oh, who is God talking to right now? myself. <laughs> myself away in this building God gives abundantly you don't have to pay to pray the Holy Ghost is here in this building right now amen do you sense it there are people with tremendous needs in this building 
And I believe God is watching and God is pouring out His presence right now. Would you just begin to lift your hands all over this building? Whatever need you have from the Lord, uh, I believe that there is healing in this building. Uh, I believe right now you can repent of your sins and say, God, I'm sorry, Lord. Uh, I'm sorry. Take this heavy load uh, off of my heart, God. Uh, I'm sorry of living a selfish life. I'm sorry of going my own way, Lord. Uh, I'm sorry, God, of bankrupting myself, my health, uh, my life, my relationships, God, uh, by going my selfish path, Lord. Uh, but today, today, God, would you let me hit the reset button? Uh, today, Lord, uh, would you pour out of your spirit? Uh, I wish you just lift your hands and begin to praise Him. I wish altar workers we begin to sweep through this crowd right now and you begin to lay hands on people uh, and say mighty God there is healing in the house uh, everything that can be called by a name uh, has got to bow its head uh, it's got to bend its knee uh, it's got to proclaim that Jesus Christ uh, is Lord uh, cancer uh, you've got to humble yourself uh, heart disease You've got to humble yourself. Uh, whatever situation in this world, uh, in this life, uh, I believe there's healing. I believe there's virtue. Uh, in the mighty name of the Lord. Uh, in the mighty name of the Lord. Uh, there's nobody like you, Lord. Uh, there's nobody like you, Lord. Uh, that's joy. Go ahead and release your faith right now. I wish somebody that has an ounce of faith uh, would turn around to somebody uh, and say, I believe that before this year is over, God is going to bless you. Uh, God is going to answer that prayer. God is going to make a way. Uh, God is going to do this uh, by His glory, through His might. Uh, he's going to make a way. He's going to make a way. Uh, in the name of the Lord. Brother Harry, Brother Harry. Otohori Brother Harry, come back up here. I need you to get in this mic and I need you to begin to prophesy. You said something a moment ago and I'm afraid it went over my head. I just want you to prophesy. I just want you to open up your spirit. And whatever God tells you to say to these people, I just want you to say it. I'm just believing for a breakthrough before years. The release will come back in a prepared manner. As Peter left the raw fish in the net and swam to me on the shore, and I had prepared fish on the fire, so prepare I you a blessing specifically designed for your family and will fit connectly to your home and nothing shall stop it. You release to me, I prepare for you, and you will not ever go back to what you released. For what I have prepared for you far outweighs what you step away from. By the authority of the Word of God, and by the power of the name of Jesus, I release a spirit of sacrificial giving in this room right now that does not return void, but comes back in multiplied ways with backslidden family members coming back to God in 2023 as the reward of the sacrifice. You will name the sacrifice your lost loved one. And in this next 2023, I will send your loved one home to you. They will speak with new tongues. They will be baptized in my name. They will live for me. I will deliver them from their stronghold and from their addiction and from their relationship that hell has placed in their life. Right now, as you stand before me, I am binding the strong man in their home, in their life, and in their mind, and I will set them free and your sacrifice will not return void. Would you lift up your voice right now? Thank 
you receive that shout yes right now Janae if you're here I don't have my glasses on you may have slipped out with one of the children if you are oh Janae I want you to come up here praise team I want you to gather behind the herons just come stand right here I want the praise team just to gather behind him Pastor Tyler to Neil Whaley's I wish you would just come up here some of our ministerial team I just when I called him a year ago the Holy Ghost had spoken to me and this is part of the just part of what I do the Holy Ghost spoke to me said the herrings are supposed to be in North Dallas. I knew what city. I didn't tell him. But I knew and he landed exactly where the Holy Ghost told me that he was supposed to be. I never doubt when I hear that voice of God. And I hear that voice of God saying something is happening. There is something up in God's world. I just feel this. I feel breakthroughs coming that are phenomenal unfathomable oh I feel the Holy Ghost I feel the Holy Ghost right now ministers team would you would you just praise team would you just begin to lay a hand on the shoulders of the Herons I want everybody in the audience those still watching online would you just lift your hands toward them right now and begin begin <laughs> Lord I do believe there is a great and effectual door open, God. I believe you have that door open. <laughs> I believe you're doing this, oh God. I believe you're doing this right now, God. Uh, let them not be weary in well-doing. Uh, they will reap if they faint not. They will reap 30, 60, and 100 fold. Uh, every offering that they've given, uh, every time that they've sacrificed, uh, give it back, Lord. Uh, give it back, oh God. Oh, I believe this in the name of Jesus. Uh, I believe this in the name of the Lord. Uh, release it, release it, Lord. Release it, Lord. Release it, Lord. Thank you, church family. We never do this. When I tell you we never do what I'm about to say we're going to do, I just feel so compelled that that 259 has got to be reached. I, and it may have just been reached. I'm going to share with you how much has been given because I believe that is somehow a threshold that God is asking us to reach. He knows, I don't know, but there are prophecies hanging over your family and this church. If I asked you how many of you have relatives in Dallas that need the Lord, would you just raise your hand all over this building? Yes. This couple behind me may be the answer to a lot of your prayer requests. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in here right now. I feel like God is loosing something, doing something in our midst. And it's all for his glory. Would you put your hands together and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There are people in this room that want to be baptized. If you want to take your next step in the Lord, and unless I'm mistaken, the baptistry is still here. I don't believe anybody's stolen it. But whoever stole it needed it. That's right. Amen. And uh, if you would like to be baptized to my right, your left, Brother Matt Simonette's waving his hand. Over here, we've got everything you need to be baptized. Today, first steps, an expedited version. When you walk out to the lobby to the right and uh, come, join, join us. God is doing something in our midst. Can you say yes, amen? Would you look around now and find 10 people and would you just tell them God is up to something? God is up to something. Thank you for being here, church family. Thank you for sacrificing.